as I was announced, um, this is the last uh, presentation dealing with uh, specific modules of um, our ILSA course. Uh, and uh, this module is entitled Live Events and Education. So interlingual, maybe speaking for live events and in education. And uh, I'll go through it briefly. Uh, so what were the aims of uh, this module, uh, first of all, mm, we wanted to introduce our students, our trainees to re-speaking for live events and in education. Now that they are uh, on an advanced level, uh, so they've been through all, all the core components and foundational components, uh, we are in the applied components domain. Uh, we wanted to show them several case study videos uh, uh, that uh, deal with um, many things. I'll talk about them um, soon. Uh, we also prepared several interviews with experienced re-speakers from Poland. Um, and we wanted to provide them with uh, both uh, basic uh, exercises and advanced practice uh, material that uses real life um, um, videos. Um, that's something that we always kept in mind, that we have to be as close to the reality as uh, we may be. So on this slide you can see the structure of this uh, module. So basically the first unit is an introduction, the second unit is a more technical one and it deals with workflows and software, and the third unit is uh, just all, all about advanced uh, practice in this uh, field. Now, as far as uh, the introductory module is uh, concerned, uh, we have many activities there, uh, but all these uh, aim at uh, showing um, some basic stuff to our trainees about uh, re-speaking in this context. Uh, for example, we have um, some case study videos on the needs of our target audiences. Uh, all these uh, videos, of course, are subtitled. Uh, some of them are videos with people speaking in Polish, but it doesn't really matter because we do have subtitles in English. Um, and uh, also we have, uh, what, an interview uh, with every speaker. Um, and we also provide the first sort of hands-on experience with intralingual um, re-speaking where we suggest how to build a, um, a little workshop for practicing re-speaking re using tools that are widely available. So you can see here this exercise. Um, that you may do on your own um, and you can see that um, in this exercise we use um, Google Docs uh, for um, synchronizing the contents of uh, respoken material. So basically there are two computers connected uh, and on one computer there is a re-speaker who re-speaks into Google Docs. It doesn't have to be uh, a re-speaking using Google Docs feature, which is called, I believe, voice writing or voice typing, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you, you can use whatever software you have uh, for this purpose, but then the advantage of it is that it appears uh, almost instantaneously on another screen. Um, and of course, this is not something that this this is something that we do not suggest as a professional practice, uh, God forbid. But we do suggest it as a practice for mm, this unit uh, and this uh, module. And so uh, you can see here um, case study video, and this is all about making events uh, accessible. And now let's pass on to the second unit, which deals with <clears throat> uh, 
uh, workflow and software. Mm, so it's all about different workflows in uh, interlingual uh, speech-to-text translation um, uh, where you can have uh, <clears throat> where you can have basically two uh, workflows. One is with an interpreter and the other one is without an interpreter and we discussed there. It's uh, the advantages of both of these models uh, as well uh, or workflows as well as their uh, drawbacks. Uh, so this is like the main gist uh, of this, of this uh, unit. But we also provide with uh, more detailed information about uh, the two settings that we deal with in this uh, module. We have um, videos that illustrate uh, real life practice in, in this uh, field. Uh, and also our trainees learn about software and they get uh, more advanced uh, um, exercises for practicing their re-speaking skills. And in terms of those uh, case study videos, you can see again that we have more of these. <laughs> so this is interlingual, uh, interlingual re-speaking for live events, uh, but we do also have another video dealing with education. And as has been pointed out before, you can access our YouTube channel right now go and watch these uh, videos uh, now. These are available uh, today even. Uh, and here you have some screenshots from an exercise that we provide in this, in this uh, unit. Uh, so what we wanted to simulate is, the, um, is a workflow um, that involves an interpreter. Obviously, it would be very hard to simulate this workflow because, uh, because of obvious reasons. So uh, we decided to go for a um, lecture by Professor Timothy Garton Ash. And this part of this lecture is uh, interpreted into English uh, from Polish. So the introductory part of this lecture is interpreted into English. And this sort of simulates uh, the way one works with an interpreter in between. Um, and these are post-exercise questions, if I may switch to the next slide. Yeah. So each of these exercises have has these um, post uh, completion uh, questions and points for reflection as you can see on this slide. And now, as far as advanced practice is concerned, well, this is basically what it says here. So <clears throat> we have uh, troubleshooting, because as um, one of my predecessors have, has mentioned, uh, there are some unexpected situations and we would like to prepare our trainees for some of these. <clears throat> so, based on our experiences, uh, we were thinking about what situations in, include in this troubleshooting. And basically, the format of it is that you get to see the question, and then you get to see the question plus the answer. And in the meantime, you can reflect and see if you had devised an answer. There are more exercises, uh, this time for moderators uh, or correctors, as they sometimes are called. Uh, so we reveal some tricks of the trade, including keyboard shortcuts. Uh, obviously, an editor needs to um, be a fast touch typer. So we provide some tips on how to become a good moderator. And, and this is, I believe, the highlight of this uh, unit. Uh, we have the mock conference, a real uh, life event, a video that you interpret or, or rather re-speak interlingually from English into your own language. And this mock conference thing is uh, comprises of different screens, so different parts. Uh, here you can see the um, 
a, a sample of questions uh, from the troubleshooting section. Uh, so th these are some of our questions, food for thought for you maybe. Mm. Yes, and now in terms of mock conference, uh, it consists of uh, several screens. So first of all, <coughs> we received an assignment and we think how, uh, how much are we supposed to charge about this assignment, uh, how to approach, how to convince our client that this, this is something that he or she needs to do, need to, needs to pay for namely the interlingual re-speaking. Then we get to see the venue and there are some nice pictures of the venue and uh, we reflect on its accessibility for <clears throat> different re-speakers where we used to work, well, we work with re-speakers who are blind or, <clears throat> or uh, have other disabilities so we need to be as accessible as, as possible ourselves. So we need to always have this at the back of our mind. And then uh, we discuss the preparations before the assignment. So um, where to get the materials uh, from, how to include them in our speech recognition software. And then we get to, uh, to the core task. We see the video and do the interlingual re-speaking. And then there are some follow-up questions uh, towards the end of in this section. And that's basically it. Uh, what I wanted to stress is that uh, in, in, in preparing the material for this unit, for unit uh, 3B, uh, we did cooperate with our project partner Dostępni.eu, who is a major player in live events accessibility in Poland and has extensive experiences dealing with this uh, subject. So that's it from me.